Today we're going to talk about inconsistent artistic results. What's up, Ron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. And today I want to talk to you about a topic that I covered recently in my podcast. It's an episode that isn't out yet because I record them in advance, uh, but I did record the episode uh, about two weeks ago, I think. Um, and it's about this topic of producing inconsistent artistic results. And I want to attack it from an interesting take, in my opinion. So let me start with a story. About two weeks ago, I was out painting um, and suddenly I bumped into a friend and um, we talked a bit and I told her that uh, I feel like recently my work has dipped in quality, uh, but at the time, exactly when we met, I just finished wrapping up a painting that I think turned out really well. And I told her that uh, I feel like there is a lot of uh, volatility in the result I produce, and, but today I'm happy because I got something that I really wanted. And her response to that, and not necessarily even what she said, but how she said it was so overwhelmingly different from what I had in mind. She was like, yeah, of course it's inconsistent. I mean, it's art. You can't get consistent results. And at first I thought about it and you know, I'm very much, I very much have the approach of it's very technical on a macro level and you just improve, you know, you practice and you improve and you get better and better results. But this made me try and explore a different thought, um, a different direction of thoughts, I guess, um, of maybe there is a random element to the results that you produce and maybe it isn't 100% controllable or even 90% or even 80% controllable. I'm going to make an important distinction in just a few moments of what I mean by that because I do think there's a lot of things that are, are under our control. Um, but just generally speaking, she was like, yeah, it's art. It's not consistent by definition because every time you produce something new, and that is the main point I wanted to talk about, every time you pull something uh, from within you, from your creativity, from even the mood you had that day or the different experiences that you had, uh, if you're in a bad mood, you may produce something very particular. And if you're in a good mood, you may be very loose and free. And um, by definition, because it is creativity we're talking about, the results aren't going to be consistent. And that's a good thing. They're not going to be consistent because one day you're going to get a certain type of painting and another day you're going to get another type of painting. One day you'll get a painting that's technically better and another you will get one that's technically of lesser quality, let's say. Um, and this idea that you really can't control it is, I think, very freeing because you can just throw out the window this idea of consistency. Okay, now, this is a good point to make an important distinction. What I believe to be the case is, is that there's the skills, and that's like what I call the micro uh, skills um, of, of, you know, how you do stuff, how you use the brush to paint and how you move it on the paper and how you match the values that you see and how you interpret the scene that you see and a lot of things that you do improve over time for sure you uh, accumulate experience and you improve so that's the at the skill level but then above that you have what i th what i at least from what i experience when i create is that there is this kind of super super power like creative power that sticks and glues all of these skills together and knows when and how to use them. So many times you'll be really good at the tactical skill, but above that, maybe you're not really immersed in the creation process and then you don't use it properly. The skill is there, you know how to blend edges, but you just didn't use it in the way you should have. Okay, so and that kind of magical part of creative creativity that we have, maybe that part is kind of volatile. Okay, and I don't mean that in a woo way. I really mean it in a practical way. Uh, that there is a part of the creation process that's really not that under control, and you can work uh, really hard on mastering the individual skills. Uh, but all of them kind of merge together and their application depends maybe on some other things that I'm sure you can improve as well. So I'm not saying that it's completely random, definitely not, but I am exploring the idea of uh, maybe a part of it isn't really controllable. Now, I do believe that with a lot of work, hard work and experience, you can get very consistent results. I don't 
have that kind of a limiting belief, I think you can get a really high level of consistency. But I do think within the range of improvement, you will have some volatility. So let's say you really, really improved, but you're still at a range. So you may be here, you may be here, you may be here. I hope that makes sense. I'm, I'm trying to um, consolidate my thoughts into something that's coherent. Um, I think these are the topics that I enjoy talking about the most, the ones that I'm still grappling with and trying to figure out myself and by talking about them it makes them more clear clearer in my mind okay so this is something that I feel like could have some truth to it but the main point and I'm gonna go back to the story I told you is her approach to this was so free she was like of course you're not gonna get consistent results that's part of creativity and I'm like yeah that's very freeing that's a very good mindset to have now there's this one thing I wanted to tell you and I have it written down here on a note something really important I think okay so sometimes what happens is um, what happens for me is that I'll reach a certain level in watercolor and I think this is really indicative of the of the watercolor media I'll reach a certain level meaning I get I produce a painting that's really good and from this point it's easy for me to think that, okay, that's me now, that's my level. And I start to identify with that kind of a painting. And then the next work I produce, maybe it's the same level, maybe it's even higher. But then at some point, you're going to produce something that's a bit inferior to that. And when that happens, I think it's important to realize that this is a part of the volatility. And even if, and I had times when I felt... I'm completely in the moment, completely immersed. I look at the scene, I figure everything out. I'm like, the composition is good, everything is great. I get to the painting process and I mess it up. And this is, I think, the aspect that's important to let go of and understand that not necessarily always you're gonna have that control. And that's fine, that's the, like the basic message is to say, sometimes you may not have control and be free and don't worry about it. Do your best. Practice as much as you can, master those basic skills, but then when you go out there and apply them, let it go. You don't know what will happen. Sometimes you may be really out of it, like not feeling so good, but then bam, you produce a beautiful piece of art. And sometimes you'll be the opposite way around, like I just mentioned. So anyway, this is my message for you today. Um, I, again, this was as a part of my podcast. I think I have, I remember there was another idea I wanted to talk about, but now I forgot it. So maybe I'll add it to another video. So anyway, I just hope this video encourages you to maybe be a little more free in your creation and, and less judgmental, more importantly. Um, so yeah, I covered this topic uh, in a podcast episode. Um, I think this video will be released before that, but definitely check it out because this is just one sample of the topics I talk about in the podcast. Most of them don't make it here on YouTube yet. I do plan on transferring and, and creating a separate channel for the podcast and uploading there. Uh, but for now, uh, check it out. I will put a link in the description box below. Uh, the podcast is available literally everywhere. So you can, um, uh, if you have Apple or, or, you know, Mac or whatever, you can get it on the iTunes store. You can get it on Stitcher if you're using Android, which is very popular. You can get it on TuneIn. If you have an Alexa, you can just say, Alexa, play Liron's Art and Creativity Show. Let me know if it worked for you. I'm really curious to know. Um, and just you can get it anywhere and on my website. So if you're having a hard time with all of these external platform uh, platforms check out my website that's Liron Yan I'll put a link below forward slash EP and the number of the episode so EP1 that's episode 1 EP2 EP3 EP4 and it goes on and on and on oh and by the way Parul Narang you wanted a shout out so I hope everything is going great um, I can pronounce it with uh, a Hebrew accent so Parul Narang maybe that's closer to how you pronounce it uh, but anyway I hope everything is going great so thank you so much for listening to me talk I really hope you enjoyed this and got something out of this video if this is the first one you watch don't forget to subscribe to my channel or check out my other videos i have some very 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 interesting ones there um, also the podcast i mentioned instagram snapchat i'm going to put everything in the description box below um, i really want to thank you and i will see you again in another video really soon